Hello and welcome everyone to Threat Hunting with Molly, where if it doesn't keep you up at night or scare the shit out of your CEO, it's probably not worth looking for. So today we're going to do a quick hunt, essentially, for CVE 2020-1938. And that is an Apache vulnerability that allows arbitrary read of files as well as a possible local file inclusion, which then could lead to a remote code execution. So let's get started. Yeah. All right. So what do we know? Um, a remote file read is going to be the part that we're kind of focusing on it and bear with me. There aren't a lot of details. So hopefully, uh, what I share will be useful as more information comes to light. Um, so the big impact is closure of sensitive information as well as local file inclusion. So being able to put any file you want and then run it. So how does this work? Um, specifically what we're dealing with is AJP connections usually found on port 8009. All right. So if you're just hopping in for a quick hunt, you could look for, um, AJP connections on 8009. Now, one thing about this is that the the file that is being read, that maybe you don't have permission to read, ends in .jsp. And we're going to look at that. But So if you want to look for sensitive files that you know run on your web app, if you know the name of them, then you can look to see if anyone tries to access them with a .jsp. Okay. All right, so for the rest of us, let's take a look at some logs. We're going to start with PCAPs. All right, so when I ran um, one of the, the tools to see whether or not you're vulnerable on a vulnerable Apache server, this was the PCAP that I got back. Uh, right away, we're going to notice that it is port 8009, so that's the AJP port. And now if we dive in a little bit more to the actual conversation, um, this is what it looked like. Okay. And remember this is an HTTP. Okay. So it's a different protocol. And so it looks just a little different. Now we're looking at it in ASCII, um, in this particular case, but if you are running rules, a couple of things stand out, uh, the client dev local, and also the, uh, the l include request URI number one. Those are two things that jump out at me. Um, and we can see right there. At the end of it, it's index.jsp. Now for Apache, basically what this returned was index.html. So there is our read anything um, example. So a JSP grabbed the index file for the web page and they read it out loud. So if there's something else that maybe you don't want people to read, that would show up there as well with the .jsp. Okay, so this gives us a little bit of ideas. Um, but can we figure out some more? Now, the the person that that put this exploit out there, this proof of concept, um, they were doing it to make sure you could test your own web server. Well, the one that I looked at, they did in Java. And so decompiling it, here's the Java code. Okay. Um, so let's see if we can learn something from this as well. So if we go down, um, we can see the string URI doesn't really seem to matter. Um, they just did random things there. We can see the string file, the index.jsp. Now that's the file that is being read. Um, and so, yeah, the string localhost, that's actually, I don't think that matters. I was running it on localhost, so I don't think we need to pay attention to that. Uh, but these other attributes, um, honestly, I, I don't know how important they are. I know the uh, index.jsp and perhaps the URI is important. So a little bit of information there. Now if we go online and take a look at what is currently out there regarding this, uh, we can see that Henry Chen did a kind of a quick GIF and let's see if we can zoom in there to find some similarities. Let's see if it'll let us a little bit. Okay, a little bit. Um, so we can see it. Now this is this is written in Python instead of Java, uh, but we do have the include file 
ability. And then also for the data, look, they did no exist JSP, right? And so, okay, maybe, maybe coming in on something. Um, uh, Onis, I apologize if I, if I read your handle wrong. This is the tool that I captured off of. Um, so if, if you read, if you translate the, the Chinese, I believe, it's saying that this first one, this file right there, checks for the remote read, okay? And in this case, this is the file they're trying to read. So, all right, uh, moving on. Right and here is the CVE 2020-1938, which also talks about the AJ, AJP connector and some links as well to other um, other things to try. Uh, and it's some different scanners as well that are out there and then a proof of concept. So um, take a look at them. Let's see if we can learn and put something together to help us do hunts and kind of the early stages of information. All right. So again, what I could piece out, and please take a look at the PCAP uh, at the uh, at the files. I'll, I'll put them up there. Um, again, no credit to myself. I'm just taking what other people have done to learn from it. So thank you to Onis for putting it out there so people could check, as well as the other people and Henry Chan. So for um, our hunt, it's pretty light right now, but look for JSP requests running on 8009, and look for file names that end in... JSP. If you look at the PCAP, you can also see that JSP returned to 200, uh, which I'm assuming is similar to HTML. So thank you so much for checking in with Threat Hunting with Molly. Like, subscribe, put ideas. Um, so many of you out there are much smarter than I am. So if you have ideas, hunts, things that you've gleaned and put together, uh, stick them down in the comments and let's learn from one another. Thanks so much. Have a good night.